All right, so Crossroads Podcast number six with the homie, Trelly D. Yes, sir. Dakota Montrelli. Am I saying it right? Yes, sir. That's it. Nice. How mm-hmm. is it, man? You got a dope looking setup back there. I like the red and black. Yeah, man. I got I got my studio set up. I'm chilling in my studio right now. I got my booth right next to me. Nice. Home yeah. studio is definitely the way to go, man. Man, I invested some money into my studio too. Like I started in my closet. Mm-hmm. I just like put up some foam like in a closet. Like that's kind of how I started, but like no, nah, I upgraded for sure. I got my own studio, whole room. Nice. Yeah, dude, I definitely once upon a time was like collecting egg cartons and stuff like that and would use like some foam that was like a camping thing. You would like lay on for camping or whatever. Yeah, some, like, thick shit to, like, fucking buffle anything. Like, honestly, trying to find anything you can. Yeah, dude, for real. Is that one of those, like, moving blankets on the wall there? Yeah, right. So, kind of, like, I don't want to fuck with this too much. But, like, yeah, I got one of those uh, those moving. Uh, it's actually, like, a soundproof, um, one of the soundproof acoustic blankets. Nice. Yeah, I put up, like, some PVC and some just hung a blanket around it and then threw some foam up on the inside and like just created a double booth honestly oh dope yeah yeah definitely, that's definitely yeah. the way yeah. to go yeah man like i mean shoot like you gotta figure a way out somehow you know what i'm saying like so you probably just can you plan to just continue building your studio through time i'd imagine huh yeah like you know like i get a check and then I'd like devote some of that money towards like some sound equipment. And then like I got behind all this foam, like sound blankets, like nice. all the way through. I got like a fucking window over here that I had to like put some huge foam soundproofing, expensive ass foam. <laughs> yeah, dude, for sure. But you know, it actually does make a difference. It does. It does for sure. Like if you walk from my living room into here, like the sound difference is crazy. Everybody always says the same thing. They're like, damn, like, I'm hearing my thoughts right now. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, and just for when you're recording vocals or anything. And then what I need to get is just, like, bass trap things for, like, the corners. Yeah, I got those set up at the corners for sure. Oh, nice. Yeah, I need to pick some of those up. Yeah, those are huge. Those are huge. Yeah, dude, my homie be coming over here rocking the bass. And I'm like, dang, man, you're probably shaking this whole place out you know. bro do you remember first time i came over there yeah i do i was thinking about it today for sure and when yeah. we, you hit me up recently but mm-hmm. yeah freaking we busted out the um the bongos and yeah dude i'm actually not even there anymore i'm in a different spot now oh no shit yeah i'm outside i'm just outside of helena now i uh, you still here though right oh yeah for sure i mean I, I'll probably stick around Montana forever and just travel, but you know, it's home. Is Montana home for you or what? No, I'm from I'm from San Bernardino, California. Oh, you are? Yeah, I grew up over there. Um I nice. moved Yeah, I grew up there for I think thirteen years and then I moved to Whitehall out of all places. That small town Montana? Bro, yeah. Like <laughs> I know so were you a, were you a like a kid growing up and going into your teens in like the public schools in California? Yeah, yeah, I was the only white person in my class for years. Like, dude, I bet coming out to small town Whitehall. Dude, I moved. So I had family who moved out here before that, but I was still living in California. And I came up here to visit them. I was like, dude, there's so many white people up here. Like, it's crazy. Like, I was not used. To, it was such a culture shock. White Hall, you know, it's just white oh. people, you know. Like, no, like, after, like, because I've moved all around Montana, too. Like, I've lived in fucking Bozeman, Manhattan, Butte, and now I live in Helena. And, like, just seeing the difference of, like, culture. You know, yeah, because it's different in every city. Like, every city's got their kind of own vibe of people, for sure. Like, I've noticed. Yeah, Montana's a pretty rad place. I dig it. Um, California's cool, too and mm-hmm. it's nice to go check out the cities like the big busy cities every once in a while but yeah i've and, moved around cali too like i lived in san diego for a while when did you start rapping uh, i started rapping when i was like so i started writing my own shit when i was about 15 
freshman in high school. Um, it just kind of started like just some homies, you know, kicking it, right. spitting right. some stuff. But like, I'd always like me and my little brother would always just be like on the bus, just like fucking rapping Eminem, like constant. Right. Day and night. Like just Eminem was big vibes for sure. Oh, for um, sure. We just always see who could rap the part the best, and like we'd fucking we just find songs and we'd like pick different parts and we'd just like keep going back and forth, like. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, dude, I don't know what it was. He was funny, serious. I mean, MTV. Bro, Eight Mile actually did kind of have a big. I remember seeing Eight Mile and being like, you know what? I could actually go for this. Like, when did you actually think like, you know what? I actually want to do this. I think it was about three years ago, which is, I, I like had my own, I had my own place and I didn't have like a mic or anything yet. And I would just, I said like, I had so much shit already written and like beats, like I was already like going in and people were telling me like, yo, you just need to start like recording. And I was like, yeah, you're right. Like for sure. Just had a certain mm-hmm. event happened where I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Like, like just go for it freaking pulled out my phone just just straight up fl studios on my phone and nice, like nice. ghetto ass walmart freaking tub <laughs> like one of those moving tubs and i just like threw some fucking blankets in there and set my phone up out of oh, to make a make a mini booth yeah dude nice like, nice like literally on a couch in my living room with like a fucking mini booth and just a little ghetto ass pop filter my homie gave me and just like right in front of the mic on the phone and just went at it like made like some really shitty songs <laughs> and hey you like, always got to make those shitty songs man dude but it was crazy it's it like it's like at the time we're like yo let's go hard we're like fucking bumping we're literally bumping that shit like yo this goes hard and, and then, it, you're yeah. probably vibing too and just feeling it and you know that's like growing you know and being like you know let's do this dude the vibe is crazy like that's one thing i've noticed like with the progression of like where i'm at now like like i just said like literally moving from like a tub to like what I have now is like light years difference that like I've only made in three years. And like, it's crazy, dude. Like the vibe is something real for sure, because I've always focused on like, it was always just a vibe of like figuring out like what's good. Like, what are we like jamming to? Like, what are we feeling? Like, you know, and. Well, I heard some, I obviously was like listening to a few tracks and I actually watched a video. You was that? That was you, of course, jumping out of the uh, plane, skydiving. Oh my god, bro! Yes. Yeah. So I was like, I seen. I type in Dakota Montreal, and I was like, oh shit, That's the first skydiving. Video that came up. When I typed in Dakota Montreal. Oh my god, dude! And then Trelly D yeah. came underneath it. Dude, that was fucking insane. Yeah, like so for my fucking. I just had my birthday in July. My fiance. I just got engaged. Oh, uh, well, congratulations and, you know, happy belated birthday. From that. Yeah, dude, that shit was crazy. Fucking, I literally proposed to her on my first show on stage. Wait. Yeah, shout what out everybody who saw that. Like, that Wait, was what show was that? That was, uh, I think it was just a show, one of the showcases uh, Nick threw on in Bozeman at the filling station. Oh, nice. Yeah, I plan to get Nick on here pretty soon, actually. Dude, Nick's dope. I, lo- I love Nick, for sure. Yeah, dude, I'm thinking of having him uh, host that Cypher project. Dude, he should, for sure. Just because he's, he's like, yeah, and he's always been putting on hip-hop events and getting he's you know, deep. new rappers involved in it and everything like that. Like, you know. He's a plug, for sure. For sure. And that's networking. Got to be able to network. Bro, like, Nick's network skills are crazy. Yeah, dude, he'd be keeping it OG. He's, yeah, he's pretty old really. school in his ways, too, and that's, you know, at least he's uh, plugging in with the newcomers, too, you know? Yeah, he showed me a lot of respect. A lot of respect, a lot of love. That was for sure. I threw that shit right back at him. I was like, yeah. <laughs> 100%. You know how the rap that. game is. If it's like a game, like a video game, like in Grand Theft Auto or something, it's like, yeah, your respect meter and all that. <laughs> Bro, it's just like, it's the way it is, is like, I feel like the mutual respect just kind of keeps growing, you know, and 
I definitely got a lot of respect for that dude, 100. percent Yeah, dude, and I mean, just everybody in general, I guess. Uh, what are your goals? I see you're working on a new EP right now, right? Yeah, yeah, I am, man. Uh, guns don't kill. Is that what it's called? Just guns don't kill. Yeah, guns don't kill. That's what nice. I'm trying to. That uh, yeah, man. I got I got about three quarters of it done. And Hell I got yeah. all the other stuff already written, just waiting on some features. Like, it's going to be sweet, man. I've never put this much. I mean, my first project, I put I put a lot of work into all my projects for sure. But this one feels a little different because I've been a lot more clear headed mm -hmm. and I've had a lot more good vibes like this past year. And I've nice. been able to, you know, reciprocate that all back in my music. And that's been that. that's been awesome to see, man. Like a hundred percent. Like I don't like even the songs, like the singles I've been dropping, like have been like good vibes. Yeah, dude. So, did you release those yourself? I seen some music that I don't know if you used like any Distro Kid or something. Yeah, like I that. used Distro Kid. Yeah. Yeah, Distro Kid is dope. I definitely recommend it. You know, mm -hmm. Yeah, people. that's. I mean, it's just made it so easy, you know. Dude, for sure. And with, like, the collaboration stuff where it's like, yo, I'd easily yeah. be able to just link you in and be like, yeah, you know how it works. Literally, for sure. Like, fucking all the people who I feature on their shit, like, they just add my shit on there and it shows up on my Spotify page, like, appears on. Dude, it makes it so easy. Dude, for sure. I'm going to start now doing more to make playlists because I'm always, like, been trying to get onto, like, curated playlists, you know. Yeah, I feel that, dude. Like... I don't even know how that goes. Like, I looked into it, and I couldn't find anything about, like, how to get on playlists. Dude, I was just like, fuck it. We'll just make our own. Yo, for real. Just be like, you know, Montana hip-hop artist oh, playlist. Bro, like, and then... That shit's going to get tons of followers, though, because, like, there's actually, like, a decent um, following in Montana, you know? Dude, there's just, a like, lot of people that... It doesn't show back in the shows, you know? Like, because everybody got work or some stupid shit. Like, it's in a different city. You know, but, like, the people who love that shit, like, and they are in that city, you know, they do show up. Yeah, dude, there is a hip-hop culture out here in Montana. It's been around for years. It's always been here. And yeah. it's just, uh, I'm sure there's hip-hop cultures everywhere, you know. Well, it has to be. There's no you way know. it's Yeah, dude. Hip-hop's so much a part of our lives now. It. Yeah, for, I mean, like, I don't even imagine, like, there's not a spot in the world where, like, hip-hop's not a thing. I was thinking that today because one of my uncles was, like, saying something to my pops, like, well, what kind of music and stuff is he making? He's like, I think he's making, like, hip-hop. And he's like, that's still around? I'm like, dude, whoa, whoa, hip-hop ain't going nowhere. <laughs> dude, I think hip-hop is the number one genre. I feel like it is every genre... I could it could be almost every type of genre because it can. can that's the beauty of it all like I've seen so much different shit like I, I love the the rock rap is pretty sweet the dubstep rap is pretty sweet um yeah like, you know they got it for when, it to, when it comes to hip-hop though like itself it's like there's so many different genres and just hip-hop itself like you got that street you got the trap like you got the deep like, you know, like, you got people who are just trying to make party music, good vibes, like, you know, there's all of it. And I actually heard, even just in, like, three or four songs, when I was listening to yours just recently, that they were in a array like that. They were kind of like, yo, this one's kind of, like, fun and upbeat, and then this one would be kind of more serious. Yeah. Um, yeah, I keep a good balance, for sure, with all my shit. Like, I, I mean, music's fucking my life, 100%. Like, it's always been my life, and, like, I'm so happy to be able to, like, finally be able to conceive all my emotions, like, in the ways, like, you know, I see fit. And, like, I try to capture every emotion, like, you know, I feel in a different song, you know? Like, no song's the same, like. Yeah, true that. Yeah, I mean, it's, like, probably one of the best outlets somebody could have if you're trying to just deal with, like, 100%. feelings or whatever, just thoughts in your head. Bro, that's just therapy and a half right there. And not just for <laughs> you, but for the the listeners too. Sometimes just yeah. to be like, yo, man, I can relate to that, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love when, you know, I make like a real song and like I hear from people, they're like, dude, I relate the fuck out of that. That was some good lyrics right there. I was like, yeah, dude, it's like that's what I do it for. You know, it's like I don't want any of us to feel alone when we're going through that shit. 
Dude, so I've seen this dude, um, his name is goes by Solo four oh six. I'm planning to get him on one of these here soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think he's gonna do the Cypher project. Um Yeah. He was saying something I seen him post something like Sometimes I hate listening to music because some songs are so real, it just makes me question my whole existence. And I'm like, what? Dude, I not right. Or he's not wrong, you know, like, like you say, a real song can really just impact you. And, and, uh, I mean, so you'd probably be making music. Shit, I mean, in my mind, I'm like, dude, I'm just going to keep on doing this forever. Oh, 100%. That's like, I mean, like, I work all day, you know, that's my day job, but then I come home, you know, and it's my night job, and, like, yeah. it's it's a good balance, bro. Like, I can't see myself not making music ever. <laughs> well, like, some I, people, they don't think that they can do both, and I'm like, well, you can, if you really want to, you can do both. I guess I never really thought I couldn't do both. Well, that's so, good. <laughs> you know, yeah, I literally, like, I work construction, bro, like. I done ran my own business. Like I done. Did Wait, what that kind of shit. construction? It's like framing, siding. Oh, you know, nice. Like building, take care of people. You know what? Dude, they need. I'm gonna. I might start another construction company eventually, just to build and develop. You know, and one day be like. I feel like build every a rapper. Studio. Every rapper is to do construction for their day job because, like, you're literally bullshitting all day, like talking shit to each other, like you come home and like that shit carries on and like it makes it easy for me to like carry that on back to my music because like i'm talking shit all day you know i'm about to come to the mic and talk shit some more like (laughs) right (laughs) yeah man what is that quarantine shirt i seen it earlier it had was it ed and eddie on that shirt yeah bro yeah Yeah, he was eating like a what is he eating a dose (laughs) he's eating a dose but still traveling quarantine but still traveling oh yeah dude he's like dude i'm out here dude so another dimension man i'm astral (laughs) bro i'm i'm gone bro like (laughs) i'm still here but you know we still still do what we do this ain't even my shirt this is my fiance's shirt like i lost all my shit i just got back from new york oh how was new york bro i've never been there i want to go there so bad so i went to buffalo Buffalo was just, like, a way bigger version of, like, you know, Missoula or Helena. Like, bro, I ain't even met that many nice people. Bro, I was straight up, like, I rolled up and, like... In New was, York? Yeah. Or you did or didn't meet? No, I, I did, bro. Oh, like, okay. I didn't... I met one mean person there. And I met so many people there. There was so many people who, like, I interacted with and, like, had, like, real conversations with. And, like... I did you fly up, like, out there? Yeah, we flew out, yeah. And I was thinking that shit was going to be ghetto as fuck because it looks ghetto. And, like, we roll up in, like, a sketchy fucking bar. And, like, literally people are buying, you know, my fiance's mom, like, fucking Dr. Pepper from the next store because they don't have it in the bar. And, like, they're that kind of nice. Like, they'll get you whatever you need, you know. Like, they're just nicest fucking human beings I've ever met, honestly. Like, whatever you need, like, they got you. Like, that's kind of the vibe they give off. Nice. I'm going to have to go out there and check it one day. What were you doing out there? Uh, we went to a Buffalo Bills game. Oh, nice. Yeah, dude, that shit was fucking crazy. Those are some wild motherfuckers, bro. They know how to party. Like, I thought I didn't want to party <laughs> until I went out there, and I'm getting – everybody's just getting fucking drunk. In an getting, NFL you know? stadium? Bro, NFL stadium, but the tailgating was the craziest shit in my life. Oh, shit, dog. Dude, oh, man. Talk about, <laughs> talk about everybody's smashed getting smashed through tables bro like you know beer pong tables <laughs> yeah. oh, people are literally just jumping on each other on them like the thing is like you lay on the table and people fucking smash you through the table dude that's so gnarly yeah you get buy fucking 12 packs of fucking tables at costco down there for that exact reason <laughs> yeah it's like it, it's wild bro i ain't never seen nothing like it but i was surprised because like there was no i didn't meet a single rapper down there Oh, really? I was, no. I How was long were you there for? Just a few days? or I was there for like three days, but I got to experience that shit. Like, I was in it. Like, I was everywhere. Like, I was meeting people. I didn't meet a single rapper. Um, I don't even think I met a single person who was like, yo, hip-hop's my shit. Uh-huh. No, they're like straight up like rock down there. Oh, <laughs> yeah? In Buffalo? Yeah. Is it like... 
uh, man, is it less big city vibe than the like New York, New York, Big Apple? Yeah, it was, it was definitely like it's a huge city. Is it more like big city vibes? Rurally, where they got like farmlands out there? Yeah, bro, it's super. It's not even farm. It's just forest. Forest. Yeah, hella trees down there. I was so surprised. I was like, it was beautiful. Like, it was beautiful. We got to see Niagara Falls. Like, there was. Oh, you did, days, bro. That shit dude, was that's crazy. dope. I, that's yeah, dude, dope. that's for the bucket list. I'm like, I gotta go. You could definitely Niagara ride Falls. in a barrel. You could definitely ride in a barrel and fall down that shit, though, and survive. Like, that's all I'm saying. Like, Donkey Kong style. Yeah, bro. Like, I always see like, oh, fucking Niagara Falls. Like, you know, kill yourself. Fucking go down in a barrel. Nah, dude, you could survive that shit. Like, there's no way you can't. Well, you never know. I what, guess I, I, I'm, some I'm people survive through some amazing stuff. But, uh, I'm not, <laughs> not going to be the crash test dummy, that's for sure. Yeah. No, for But speaking real, of like, that, dude, how was it flying in that plane going on the skydiving, though? Because like, okay. it was a little, like, what is that, like a little Cessna-style plane? It is the most sketchy fucking plane I'd ever been on in my <laughs> life, bro. They got duct tape, like, just to fuck what? with you. No, they're like... Oh, to fuck with you. Literally, as we're rolling up, like, people are like, damn, they got duct tape all over that plane. And we're like, oh, man. Like, I'm, I was already scared. Like, I just found out. It was the day of my birthday. Like, I just Oh, they my girl told me that. Was, like, a surprise for you? Yeah, yeah. She told me, like, she told me the day I woke up on my birthday. Like, oh, yeah, by the way, you're about to jump out of a plane today. I'm like, oh, like, the fuck I am. <laughs> right? Like, who are you telling? Oh, man, dude. I'd be like... Okay, it's one thing when it's your idea, it's another when it's like, surprise! Yeah, dude, like, I was I'd be like, like, I wish you would have captured that on my, camera. I'd like, I would sink into my gut or something. I'd be like, huh? Dude, I bet my oh shit face, like, in that moment was fucking off the charts. Like, I've seen it a little bit when you jumped out of the plane. Yeah, bro, you could, bro, I was But then so you scared. come out and you're like, yeah, tongue it's out. Crazy. Like, <laughs> dude, you look like, you look at my video and then, like, you literally look at my fiance's video, like, she was totally cool. Like, she already knew what was about to happen. I was fucking scared shitless. Like, so, was- the real question is, from that angle, does the Earth look flat or a globe? No, I'm the just Earth's flat. The Earth's flat. <laughs> It'd be looking hella flat at that angle. I'd be like, dude, I'm going to be flat as a pancake if this shoot don't launch. No. Oh. <laughs> I mean, when you're in, like, a regular plane, though, like, the Earth still don't look flat. Like... No, dude. I mean, it's looking lumpy for show. <laughs> it's got lumps, man. Like, come on. Yeah, dude. There's I mean, we'd be living in the Matrix nowadays. Like, at least we're able to have these podcasts in home studios, you know? <laughs> I mean, bless up for sure. Because, like, that's definitely, like, the kind of lifestyle I wish I had when I was younger. And here I am. What? Having this, dude. Like, being able to fucking just come into a room and, like, have my own vibe for sure dude definitely uh the next now i see things about like more virtual performances too where yeah people you know i guess it'd be just similar to twitch streaming and like getting tips and stuff like I that. mean, it's not a bad idea especially like for people like you know us here in montana trying to get our shit out there like it's not a bad idea to get like people to get an idea of like what to expect when they come to a show because like dude we go hard at the shows like everybody i know who goes at the show like definitely goes hard and like they put themselves out there and like i got respect for that for sure yeah and they're not like always happening all the time like in certain areas but it's not like there's always a hip-hop show in helena in fact i think that my goal is to one day have a our own venue type thing because there's not a lot of venues that really cater to hip-hop yeah Yeah. dude so fucking um so we got a show coming up in helena um oh you do yeah at the lewis and clark tap room bro swayze swayze's coming here oh dope what yeah who's who's putting it on is just lewis and clark Nick. nick is oh nick will be yeah oh nice Dude, he sent me that shit and he's like yo like you want on this i was like fuck yeah i want on it bro like i've been traveling to bozeman and missoula like you telling me i'm about to get a show here in helena fuck yeah hell yeah dude Swayze, he had the um you can be my corona and lime uh-huh bro he's got some and buzzing bro like main squeeze yeah Swayze's the vibe like i i, I definitely get down to some Swayze. 
Yeah, Shwayze. Oh, man, I remember watching his, like, MTV show back in the day. That's crazy. Um, oh, you had an MTV show? Shwayze? Yeah. Yeah, it was something like he was on, like, probation, like, right when he got his record deal or something. Uh, uh, some, like, real life shit. Yeah, where it's like, yo, I just got this record deal, but I'm, like, gotta go <laughs> community service, like, 400 hours or something. I don't know. <laughs> dude, I don't know. I'd watch that all day. Yeah, MTV, yeah, dude, happening. they're like... We can sell it. What happened to MTV, dude? Like, that shit used to be popping. I don't know, dude. The world is getting all digital. We're turning into the metaverse. You hear about that? With Facebook? No, what the fuck? I don't know. Is that, like, all digital shit or what? Yeah, dude. You ever see, like, Ready Player One at all? Yeah, definitely. It's just stuff like that where... And I don't think Facebook's the only tech company. I think it's all of them, like, Microsoft and whatever that... It'll be just be more like I think it'll take social media to the extent where you'll have more avatars and like virtual interactions, virtual concerts. They say things like I can believe it. Honestly, um, like your rooms, if you're like rich enough or have the setup that you could have like simulations of people that you're oh, having meetings with and like interact with it. stuff like that. Yeah, dude, I got I got a VR headset like. I don't know, like a few weeks ago. Oh, you did? You, dude, that shit is crazy. Wait, is it I Oculus? Believe, yeah, I believe what you're saying, like 100%, bro. Because like, that's I what, uh, I believe Zuckerberg owns Oculus, too. Bro, I hope he ain't trying to trap my mind, because, like... <laughs> <laughs> dude, I don't yeah. know, bro. That shit was crazy, dude. I threw that on, and, like, I just throw... Like, they always like, be trying like, to trap our mind, man. Why did they trap music? No. <laughs> Oh, dude, no, I've already, I've already been you through know, this conversation. You know, Kanye West be out there like, you know. Uh, Kanye West is the leader, bro. Yeah, you never no, know no, what he's No, he's not the leader. Doing. He was, he was, uh, he was, uh, uh, patient zero for it all. Yeah, dude, he's a pretty, uh, far out dude. I see he's be walking around with this, like, mask on nowadays. You know him, he's dude. always. I mean, I don't blame him, bro. If I was that famous, I'd probably walk around with the mask on, too. Yeah, especially if Pete Davidson was walking around with your ex-wife. No. <laughs> I mean, fuck. Bro. I, I heard he's getting down with Kim Kardashian now. I'm like, dude, whoa. Mr. Steal Your Girl for sure. Dude, the Mac Miller one, because Mac was with Ariana Grande. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're kind of giving me the Mac Miller vibe with the bucket yeah. hat. Hey, uh, and that. Well, you had that one song uh, that I heard too. And I was like, was this horn on a Mac Miller song? Yeah, bro. Bow, 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 bow. Uh, well, yeah. Who that? Yeah, that's yeah. A, that's, that's a Mac song for sure. It was like the same sample or something. Party as on the Fifth Ave. Party on yeah. Fifth Ave. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, dude. I I love Mac, man. Like, I think that was actually after he died. Like, I started making music after he died. Oh and, really, dude? Like that shit hit me deep, man. Like I love Mac. Like I, I always listen to Mac all day, bro. Like that shit hit me deep when he died. He's definitely a huge influence in my music. Like I felt like Mac would be proud of that song for sure because I go in, bro. Hell yeah, dude. So what do you like? Get beats from other homies or producers, or produce some yourself, it, or what? It varies. I've made. I've made a lot of beats by myself, but I've never actually used any of them. Uh -huh. um, I've only had one homie, or I guess two, actually. I had two homies um, that have... One homie made a beat for me and, like, sent it to me. Like, um, I wasn't, like, a part of the beat-making process, but the other time, though, I released Midnight Jitters. My homie oh, yeah, I was here. Here. yeah, man. So we made that beat from scratch. Like we spent a whole weekend just trapped in the studio making that song. And like we saw the sunlight for like maybe fucking not even 30 minutes. Like, oh, yeah. Like, oh, no, we were in the studio. Like my girl was getting what, mad What, Vampire at me. Weekend or something? Bro, my girl was getting mad at me because like <laughs> she didn't even see me for the whole weekend, bro. She saw me like maybe 30 minutes. Like I said, like she, we'd go out and smoke a cigarette like once every while. And, like, she'd see me, and she'd be like, damn, y'all still in there. And I was like, yeah, man, we're cooking. Like, we can't stop the process. Like, dude, we stayed up the whole weekend because, like, we couldn't stop. Like, the process was just kept flowing. Midnight Jitters is a good uh, name for the song. I'm going to listen to the song again, and I'm 
I'll think of that. You know, because that yeah, the exactly. process of the song is always a cool story too. Literally, Midnight Jitters. We tried our best, like, and I feel like we captured we captured that vibe to a T. Honestly, like, I hope every time somebody clicks on that song and listens to it, they feel like what we felt because like that shit was crazy. Hell yeah, dude. So what, you probably, you ever go back to California or do you have any family out there anymore? Yeah, I got all my family, like, not all my family, but I got a lot of family out in Cali. Most of them, my dad lives down in San Diego, or not San Diego, San Bernardino. My uncle lives in San Diego. Um, Those are like the two mains down there, but I got like all my aunts and others down there and cousins. And I got cousins in fucking Vegas, like Utah. Arizona. Um, so yeah, I go to Cali. Last time I went to Cali was for my 21st birthday. I nice. went nice. to go see them and, you know, reconnect and shit. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Mm. yeah, I always got to celebrate the 21st, man. It's always like a Bro, legendary birthday. I went to a Logic concert for my 20, on my 21st birthday. It was on my 21st birthday. Dude, I bet that was lit. Dude, it was crazy as fuck. I got to see uh, Kyle, NF, and Logic. And NF killed that Kyle? Shit. Kyle's dope. I saw. I've seen Kyle. I Park. know. I thought that he name was that. like cool too. Kyle. He's the one that was in that dope movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah, he's cool. I. It's crazy because like I was listen. I listened to him before he was like even big, and then like when he finally started making it big, because I loved his like his just like the way he kind of went about it. It's like kind of like a comic relief, but like I feel like music's like a balance. Like, bro, there's everything. Like, oh yeah, in music. Yeah, you know how it is. It's like that people say things like, and one well, how comedy is used as like kind of a therapy thing, or people like they might be dealing yeah, with serious stuff, but yeah, it comes out as. I don't comedy, get on people who, know. like, I, I kind of get it, but like, I don't get it to the extent that some people take it of people who make like you know comical music. You know, I, I get to the point where like you know we take this shit seriously and like you make it feel like it's a joke, but like I feel like those people as well are also like using that shit for some sort of relief in their own lives. You know, they they just do it in their own way. You know, so I don't get why like a lot of people diss on like these funny, you know, these people who are kind of like Lil Dicky. Like I don't even care, bro. Like Lil Dicky's got some funny ass lines. Like dude, hell yeah, like, that funny shit will spread. You make people laugh and be like, oh, I gotta show yeah. my friend this shit, dude. Uh, but he's you know, also but they don't always be, people don't always want to well, share hard. like really serious stuff quite quite as often you know but if it's funny people share it uh, lonely island they're funny as fuck dude lonely island is dope as fuck why the fuck i mean i don't know how many people hanging on lonely island probably a bunch man they kept doing what they're doing and i still think they're dope as fuck there's always going to be a hater no matter what you're doing you know That's the truth. if you're winning there's definitely or if you're doing good or you're doing something you love I think I feel like that's part of the game of life too, where it's like, hey, how bad do you actually just want to like do what you want or what you love, and no matter well, that's what people why say, you know? I love what you're doing for sure. Like, well, thank I fucking, you. Man. I got big respect for what you're doing because that shit takes guts. Yeah, man. I just I've been unplugged for a while since COVID, especially, and I was like, man, I gotta get plugging back in and rebuilding again take things to the next level or uh you know just well i'm like 30 something now 32 now 32 years young baby yeah for sure and uh Mm -hmm. you know i've done a lot of partying and it was like yo maybe i should pump the brakes on the partying (laughs) and you you gotta focus on some other things too everything in moderation exactly you know find a way to uh just you know how to setting some goals and accomplishing them though i mean like what other goals do you have with hip-hop i know you got the album that you want to like dude i want to tour like, one day on and... tour 100 percent. like not probably not with this but like i want to do a tour 100 percent. like i've always oh for sure I, and regularly like, getting get to the get routine of being like yo we're going out again dude i want this shit to be my life bro like if i had the right opportunity to follow my lap like i could kiss this fucking working shit goodbye bro and i'll go start a different type of job like you know i, I would love a career yeah true and it's crazy well, because you can build it you know yeah the people who like you know do this shit and they come into people who like you know they have they have opportunities they meet the right people you know for these opportunities to be real for them and they make it a reality like that's when the music really starts taking off i feel like because then you're able to like put all of it into your music like you rely on that shit 
For sure, yeah. It's um, when you you do have to know the right people as well, like you say, uh, because that's half the time that's what it is. But what do they say? It's not what you do; it's who you know. Uh, because if you know the right people, you know, rub elbows and get opportunities. But if you're not out there mingling, going to shows, you know, when I was first getting into the arena and the game of it, it was like, yeah, just showing up at shows, going to a show. Yeah. Literally. I mean, that's how I even met people who put me on to the shows. You know, it's like I showed up and met some of the people and they're like we kicked it and then I showed them some of my stuff and they're like why are you not performing I don't know like I guess I never like really fucking didn't line it up yet huh? <laughs> just didn't communicate with the people that put it on yet didn't have the right opportunity but as soon as I did like I was all over that shit and it's been yeah. going great ever since man like from my first performance to now like my energy on stage is way different like it's fucking amplified Oh, yeah, growing more comfortable with it all and just getting yeah, the, like, you know, being in front of everybody and like that's that takes guts, man. Like being on stage in front of everybody, but also knowing how to, you know, interact with them. Yeah, steer the, you know, steer the vibe like in a way that you see fit is something that you become more comfortable with for sure. Like, you know, the you more gotta be like, you put your hands up. No. <laughs> Bro, I ain't even a vet. Like, I ain't even close. I'm a rookie, bro. Like, oh, but I, I mean, I, just, you know how it is. Like, yeah, no, 100%, man. With but, like, the audience of, like you say, creating that vibe. Yeah, 100%. And, like, that's what you want. You want everybody to be having a good time. Like, you want the main thing that we all want as artists is everybody to dig your shit and, like, vibe with you while you're on stage. Like, you know, you want to rock together, like, while you're doing that. You want to be, like, up there you know, feeling like a fucking TV show that everybody, you know, is fucking talking like while they're, you know, doing like, you know, you don't want to be white noise, you know, you want to be like, the, true that like, you want to be the center of the energy while you're on stage. Cause that's why everybody's there, you know, like, yeah, man, it's cool. Uh, the different types of shows that are put on too. Like sometimes they're not just like, Oh yo, this is the headlining act, but there's, like, I'll see Nickel putting on a lot of different shows that are, like, just about highlighting the different artists. And it's just another hip-hop show. It's showcasing. You know? Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's just like, yeah, dude, it's just staying active and getting out there. and Which is crazy because, like, if you think time. about it, if you think about it, I feel like everybody in Montana thinks, like, oh, it's just, like, another fucking rapper show. But, like, the reality of it is, is, like, At Nick's least there is a show. One, <laughs> yeah, Nick's not the only one doing this shit. Like, if you go oh, to other no. places... If you go to other places, other states and other cities, like they're literally doing that to put the artists on from their cities and their state. And like, you know, it's a unified group. And Nick is literally the fucking foundation of that shit for us right now. Like he's literally holding this shit together for us. And like they do that shit all over the fucking country. You know, like the only difference is, is like Montana got in it, bro. Like they got to see like we're in this shit like together. Like we're all trying to make us big. Like, you know. Well, yeah, for sure. I mean, that's uh, the thing is keeping that balance between, you know, keeping your ego in check and being like, yo, because obviously I know how it is too to feel competitive or how people will be rivaling each other. And you get still stuck in the spaces of, and it's only natural, the things like, who's popping or what views and likes and numbers and this and that and yeah. you know all those little things at the end of the day yeah no, that's all shit don't fucking that shit don't matter illusions but what, in the matrix but what does matter is, it does get in the way sometimes yeah what does matter is that if i'm on stage and i'm able to make you see what i'm doing you know on stage like and you're going to show that respect to me chances are when I see you on that stage, I'm probably going to show that same respect to you. And that goes with people who don't even perform, man. Like, I have so many people who come up to me after, like, I perform. Like, yo, you killed that shit. And I'll just fucking sit there and kick it with them. Like, you know, we'll just fucking vibe. And, you know, I get to see what they're about. And, like, you know, like, it's the music thing is just uniting, honestly. And, like, yeah. that's yeah. where it's just it's going to slowly grow, I feel like. You know, it, Montana's kind of late to you know the crowd i feel like but like we're gonna get there 
Yeah, man. At least being a part of it all, it's always uh, with the internet, it makes it way easier to connect with the rest of the world. And I mean, so with your music, Trelly D, but do you have any sort of just like name for your anything else you do, like your studio or just Trelly D? I got, I got like, I mean, Let's just hypothetically speak, you know. Or when you release your music under any sort of label, I guess. Yeah, like, I put it under, like, you know, my shit, like, my Backyard Bumps, you know? Like, that's... What is it? Backyard Bumps. Backyard Bumps? Yes, sir. (laughs) Yo, all right, cool. (laughs) Yeah, dude, like, fucking, I envisioned that shit, man. Like, I already, like, looked up, I was like, dude, there's nothing under this name, like, for music. Like, I mean, everybody should have their own brand as an artist. I envisioned that shit, man, and, like hypothetically speaking like you know when i do come into position of power like i would love to have my own label and like dope artists on like throw dope shows like i've been to festivals and like concerts and like that shit the way that shit makes me feel i'm like dude i want to reciprocate that like i want to be doing what these people are doing like i want to take the shit to a bigger level like you know it's just understanding like all the different things that go into that and to be able to do that dude but i've been paying attention i've been learning you know and i'm I'm a oh, student right now, but guarantee one day I'm gonna be a professor. Hell yeah, dude! You gotta always stay in tune. Like I'm always still changing with the times, you know, learning what's what people are doing now, and I always still find myself learning what not to do from my own mistakes. I'll be yeah, like, okay, uh, I'm not gonna do it like that. You know, run through the trials and errors of uh, just how to communicate with people and network with people. You know what I mean? That's a huge part of the shit, for sure. Yeah, and, you know, putting on shows, what people enjoy with, like, a hip-hop event. And all that. Yeah, man, like, I would Wait, love... you drum, too? Yeah, dude, I got a drum set, like, right here. I'm not about to turn this camera right now, but I'm sitting right next to my drum set, for sure. So, what, did you ever play any, like, band or anything? Yeah, my older brother and I, we played metal music. We wrote a few songs, actually, and recorded a few songs. We never put it out there, but, like... We had That's a few dope. made, um, like all original, but like, yeah, we, my older brother and I made rock and metal music, and my little brother and I made rap and hip hop music together. Oh, sick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I would love to. I, I gotta get a better drum set if I wanted to like incorporate this into like you know my beats and stuff. But it's you a, know, it's uh, for sure. you familiar with Mod Sun at all? I literally just listened to Mod Sun the other day. Yeah, dude. Once he hooked up with Avril Lavigne, I was like, "Damn, dude!" It's crazy. I was like, mm-hmm. his childhood dream came true. <laughs> dude, fucking Mod has got it going on, and like, the, what I always liked about his music is he always just like kept a solid vibe about himself. Like, yeah, he. I was definitely like, yo, he's definitely like a hippie guy, like from the '60s, '70s vibe. Yeah, but he owns it for sure. Yeah, dude. Um, but I'd seen him recently. He would do more of that drumming with his performance stuff or with his music really? cool. dude that's impressive for sure it's just cool to keep the uh if you got the skill to like use it sometimes and whatnot you know? i'm not that kind of skill i've i could throw on a simple beat while i'm drumming and rap to it but like that crazy shit i can't get into that and rap to it that gets a little too complex right dude i would i'm interested to hear your uh metal music one day that'd be sick dude, i'll fucking send you a song for sure it's pretty good shit Hell yeah, dude. Dude, I'm stoked that you're uh, getting down with this beat and the ciphers. Yeah. You talked to one guy about doing one with you? Yeah, Shorty B, um, Jordan. Was a homie? Yeah, I met him um, at one of the Mac Lethal shows I opened up for. Oh, the recent one that Nick threw? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, um, but we kind of talked and, like, we were vibing and shit, and he's dope as fuck, and, like, I like his music a lot. And I think, you know, me and him could definitely hop on that cypher. I already got my verse wrote, bro. Like, literally, as soon as you, like, made that shit and, like, I found that beat, I, I wrote my verse to it. I was like, ooh, dude. <laughs> this is Hell good. yeah. It's yeah, a good yeah. vibe cypher. So, like, I fucking threw some good shit in there, 100%. Hell yeah. Yeah, dude, I'm stoked to uh, do it for Montana. And then, you know, I'm going to do it for just state by state so that, you know, hopefully it just creates a bigger network and we can all kind what of listen. And, you and, and, well, you know, I just 
I'm going to start hitting up Idaho, Washington, Oregon, and California. Yeah. Mainly. I got some people who are up in South Dakota that might be down. And I was thinking the Dakotas. Of yeah, course, I want to hit every state. The people who toured, there was some, I met some dope people and we networked, um, who toured with Odd Squad the whole tour. Oh, nice. Um, and they ended up chilling at our homie's house, uh, Bud Holly, you know. Um, Bud Holly? And, uh, Bud Holly, bro. Like Buddy Holly? No, Bud Holly, bro. That's the, that's the name he goes by. He's from South Dakota. I gotta check um, him out. Yeah, he's dope, man. He's a cool, he's a cool cat. Um, but, the rappers from South Dakota who toured with Odd Squad, I think he was friends with them or something, but they ended up coming over to his place after the show. And like, dude, they were dope as fuck. They got bars for days, a hundred percent, but they were definitely had the vibe. Like, let's do, let's do shit together. You know? Yeah, dude, that's one of my other big plans just with the whole like ciphers and the podcasting is just to, you know, strengthen the network so that touring is easier, you know, and you have a better idea of who's who in these different areas. You know, being able to connect face to face like this makes mm. like a whole world of difference. Yeah, definitely. You know, other than just a Facebook message or whatever. Oh, dude. It's way different for sure. And it's always like you can I'll get like kind of this nervous feeling. It's like, oh it's gonna be kinda weird, but it's it's still pretty chill, you know. Bro, ever since I jumped out of a plane, I don't really get nervous. <laughs> <laughs> True that, dude. I saw my life those thoughts. In my eyes. Yeah, right. Like that made me look at life a whole lot differently, for sure. Dude, your adrenaline must have definitely been running. Dude, there's nothing like initially feeling like you're about to jump out of a plane. Like you see it all over my face in the video. Like, dude, that video is dope, though. Like I shot myself, bro. I didn't actually, but like I was fucking mentally shit myself, one hundred percent. Dude, for sure, I want to do that one day, but I still recommend like... it, dude. You'll have a thirst for it. You'll want to do it again for sure. Like everybody there was super cool. They're like, "Yo, come fucking, come get your license and do this part time. Like, come fucking jump with people. Like, it's crazy." Those guys are like addicted to it. They're like, "Dude." dude the... I was addicted, bro. Like, after the first one, like, all I wanted to do was do it again. Nice. <laughs> well, I mean, that, it's, it kind of is those same feelings you'll get, like, on stage, you know? Yeah. Probably not quite the same as jumping out of a plane, but, you know. You definitely chase that rush, for sure. It's a different type of high. Yeah, especially when your life, you know, because there's always that thought, I would think, in the back of your mind of, like, you know, but I don't know. Dude, if, the thought you don't want to think, yeah. If I could do this shit, because, like, so I did Odd Future, or not Odd Future, Odd Squad, back-to-back. -back. Like, fucking, I did the Missoula show and the Bozeman show. And, like, the first night was super dope. But, like, that second night was way more dope. Like, I couldn't even imagine trying to do that shit. Like, I can't imagine it. Doing that shit back-to-back-to-back-to-back. -to -back -to -back -to -back. But, like, you know, you take a day off and then you go back at it. But, like, dude, I felt like that energy would, like, I was ready for more after that second show. Like, after the first show, I was ready for the next night. After I did the next night, I was wishing there was more. Like, like I can't even imagine the energy I would, we would be able to bring if we were doing that shit consistently like that. Like, oh my god. Yeah, dude. Yeah. The road. Yeah. I've experienced some rad stuff on the road. You know, you, the good, the bad, and the ugly. But there's still so much more to. You know, it's like you say when you're like, oh, I'm still a rookie, man, and it's like. I always kind of feel that way even about myself. And it's like, ah, oh, I have accomplished this stuff so far, which is pretty cool, but there's always so much more that you still so do. Yeah. I'm still hungry for more. You know, it's like that adrenaline, yeah. that chase is never over, you know. It's like the crossroads, man. I'm just like running in circles right. back at the crossroads. <laughs> Shout out crossroads. Yeah, dude. I mean, it's a... Uh, it's a dope name though man like i dig it i like what you got going on oh thanks man you know yeah the crossroads it's like a good place it's i've always thought of it like to me when i came from like rock and guitar stuff there was always people that were like oh yo homie the legend was oh made a deal at the crossroads you know and became a success and yeah. i would always feel like shows playing shows was like going to the crossroads because it's like yo i'm going this is where everybody meets each other and mm -hmm. we have a party 
It is. And then, it is. you know, we cross paths and we go, just like now, it's like, yo, we're crossing paths, chopping yeah, it up. Yeah, you know? 100%. Like, I've always thought of life like that, too. It's like you literally just like souls fucking just colliding, crossing paths, you know, all that good shit. Like, definitely experiences. Um, dude, I love life. Like, fuck, man. There's times where I'm down and, like, I think about, like, you know, like, what would I miss? Like, you know, like, when I'm gone, I think about, like, times, you know, like, what happens when I do finally die, you know? Like, what am I going to miss the most? Like, dude, that shit makes me appreciate everything I have so much more. And, like, the people I meet, I'm just like, dude, I just want to, like, I just want to vibe. I just want to get it with everybody. Like, that's kind of, like, the vibe I've always been on. Like, Dude, true. Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. the sad thing is we never really know when our time is coming. And the thing is, like... Your music, though, it, you know, if you put it out there right and everything like that, that can last forever in a sense, longer, you know. And um, kind of like you say, even with Mac Miller, or it'd be the same with like Lil Peep or XXX yeah, fucking, Tentacion dude, people. Like Nipsey, like. Yeah, a lot of people might people not even like, listen until after you pass. Yeah, that shit's crazy. Like, and then it I, pops. Or, you know. They always say, uh, um, like the people who paint like dope ass pictures who are in galleries, like that stuff doesn't really get famous until they're dead. So like, I mean, you think Da Vin in time of Da Vinci, you really think like people were like, yo, this is a great fucking painting. Like, no, he died. And then like his fucking shit was like fucking crazy. But he was yeah. a huge yeah. famous though, I guess. But like, that's, that's kind of what I'm trying to get across. For sure, man. And you know, uh, some people, would argue like oh yeah you shouldn't be so focused on like your legacy because people just forget about you <laughs> but i mean you got life you could dude it's not about do the something legacy. with it if you want you know and just like be like dude just live your life if you want to live it to the fullest and jump out of a plane go <laughs> do it if you want to if you just want to chill and play video games in the house no offense to video games because <laughs> i love video games yeah do that, you know, but... Dude, I used to love video games, and I can't even, like, sit down and play video games anymore. Like, I get fucking anxiety because I'm not doing something. <laughs> I feel that, too. Uh, I'll play with, like, my kids sometimes, but... Yeah, that's different, though, for sure. But, you know, I'm always like, I should be working on some music or something. Bro, I can't even smoke weed anymore just because, like, only time I'll smoke weed is if I'm trying to make music because, like, I can't even sit down and try to play video games while I'm smoking weed because I feel like a piece of shit because I'm not creating music. <laughs> right. So I was like, I can't even smoke weed in general just because like every time I smoke weed, like all I can think about is just making music and like, like I never want to be anywhere I am if I'm high because like all I want to do is be in my studio. Well, I mean, you know, that's kind of the goal sometimes, you know, is to be like, if you love being in the studio and you want to turn that into your life one day, like, it's pretty amazing what some people can do nowadays with, you know, from mm. a home studio. And, you know, I don't know. Recently, I heard of the Island Boys. <laughs> I don't know if you heard of those guys. I saw, like, a video on Facebook, but, like. Yeah, and that's I, what I, it I is, caught, right? I, I, like, I, I, caught a catch out of it. I caught a catch out of it, for sure. Like, man, like, I don't know, like, what they're on. Like, what their lifestyle is like. I don't but, think they like, know what they're on. I mean, fuck it. Like, there's going to be people who hate on it, but it's like... Dude, I mean, they're, they're, they're just I'd be lying if I didn't thing, yeah. fucking say, like, you know, like, me and my homies, like, ain't said some stupid shit before. You know, just people vibing. Are like, I love that shit. <laughs> Bro, like, imagine, I can't even imagine, like, how much shit, like, goes unrecorded that, like, would be gold. You know what I'm saying? Like, in the moment, freestyles that just happen, and, like, you're just with a homie, you're just like, yeah, like, saying some fucking stupid shit about the ice cream truck or whatever. Like, you know, you're just, like, rapping in your car, and you see some shit go by. It's like, nobody else saw that, but, like, we fucking vibed off of whatever just happened, for sure. Dude, that's what I was thinking about doing uh, some of those live stream stuff for. In the future, I'm going to get more into that, where it'd be, like, get live stream freestyle stuff going on. Uh. So that you know, people could pipe in and they could like throw in words or throw a donation and be like, yo, here's a word. Yeah. And, you know, just Friday try to get Friday Night it. Freestyles. Let's get it. 
Yeah, dude. And I'm sure that people would tune in at times. And just in this digital age, how we're living nowadays, dude. It might not be a bad idea because then people would actually be like, you know, the live streams, I feel like, grab the most attention. I ain't done a live stream yet, but I've thought about it plenty of times doing some Friday night freestyles. Yeah, dude. I mean, it's not everything all you know how it is with the internet it's like not everything always works or pops or feeds into the algorithm but every once in a while there's like something good that works and then you find a formula and you can kind of develop a formula i don't know it's like developing as an artist how long you've been like developing you're probably always developing really getting better you know oh yeah for sure like i said like i started making like i made my first song like three years ago like i was actually just talking to my homie about it like we were facetiming and like he was telling me he's like bro like you released your first song like three years ago on soundcloud and i was like fuck bro like i hope people don't go to my soundcloud and listen to do that you still because... fuck with SoundCloud? huh do you still do soundcloud no or... dude that's what i was saying like i hope people don't go to my soundcloud because i don't even use it anymore i, I don't i haven't used ever it did. since i first i mean i first started releasing my stuff to soundcloud and it is but if people do go to my soundcloud best check out like my youtube and see my new music because you can see the progression for sure like you were saying like three years from now not even close to the same so i mean what's the best way to find you if people want to find you on the internet would you say? um look up my youtube trelly d youtube trelly d spotify you know dakota montrelli on facebook like you know i'm i'm out there for sure and like i put my shit out there 100 percent yeah, I'll put it, links in the description and everything. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Should develop a pretty cool network. And in time, you know, this is only my sixth one. Um, so it'll just, I'm not planning on stopping. So, in, you know, bro, like, people yeah, will probably listen to this podcast in six months, you know, when it's grown, grown in six months. Yeah. They'll listen that's back, what it's about. You know. Bro, I look at, like, Sway of the Boarded. You gotta start like, eventually when you, when you get this like foundation set up, like start putting beats on for like fucking rappers you're interviewing and having freestyle over the air, like. Ugh. Yeah, dude. I uh, I just have to start working with some other programs, but for now for sure. I'm starting it like this, pretty simple. It's good, That's, dude. It's good. I like what you got going on. Dude, when everybody has a smartphone nowadays and can just be like, "Yo, Zoom," and yeah you know do this i tried to pull it up on my smartphone but it wouldn't let me pull it up what zoom yeah no so like i got my laptop out though luckily right here it works oh nice well hell yeah i mean was there anything else you want to talk about before i roll Just out new ep guns don't kill hopefully, oh dude <laughs> hopefully coming out next year man like for sure coming out next year I'm hoping by January, though, like, that shit is going to be fucking ready to go, ready to full send for the new year, you know, and then have some good momentum to carry the year out with, for sure. Dude, I was just thinking of something about that the other day, like, I was just thinking about, you know, the guns with, like, a, it'd be like a clown gun that would have, like, a, a flower pop out of it. Yeah. And I don't know, I was just thinking about that, but the guns don't kill makes me think of that. And yeah, it's definitely, like, that's that type of vibe, for sure, for the whole album. It is, it's some it's some real shit, but, like, also some good vibes, you know? Like, yeah. that's, how it's, that's how you gotta be, like, you know, you gotta be real, you gotta be all of it, honestly. You gotta manifest everything, but, like, good vibes always. Yeah, yeah. it's good to try and, if you can take a negative energies or negative situations in life and try to turn it into a positive or at least you know that's the thing with music right like oh man i got these bad feelings can i turn it into something good you know yeah man i've had so many songs where like it, like listening to the beat i was ready to write some sad shit and like started it and then like fucking the energy shift and turn it into a positive song that stuff's dope I yeah, still dude. feel a whole lot less shitty after I write that shit and record it. That's the magic of music and, you know, just the transformation they can have on you and other people. I'm looking forward to your new stuff, and I'm really looking forward to the Cypher, too. Thank you for hitting me up about doing that. Hell yeah, dude. As soon as I saw that, I was like, hell yeah, I'm all over that. 
Dude, dope. And thanks for doing this podcast, too, because I think I just hit you yeah. up like, yo, you want to do this sometime? Yeah, literally, bro. I was like, fuck, I ain't doing anything right now. <laughs> yeah, dude. So, you know, and that's what I'm just trying to do is get more comfortable with, you know, just being like, yeah, oh, it's, it's easy, man. It's just, mm-hmm. it's, it's chill, you know. It's find that happy medium between, like, professional and chill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. This was dope, though. I definitely appreciate you having me on your podcast for sure hell yeah bro i mean we can do it again some other time in the future and you know we'll just stay plugged in and stay connected oh we got a jam though like i'll bring my drum set over or something we'll fucking jam yeah dude i got a drum set here oh i would much rather drum on that one (laughs) yeah i mean you know it's just the home studio thing where it's like yo I love making noise and getting homies around to make some music and yeah that's why it's so dope to have the studios like literally when everybody's over it's like you know let's go into the studio and fucking jam everybody comes to the fucking studio we're fucking jamming like i got mics like people fucking rap over what we're doing like it's just dope like that's just kind of like the shit i love like that's why i love music hell yeah brother dude i'm stoked that we're making some music together it was, oh uh... i'm stoked Definitely. Uh, really yeah, bad. that was that first time. Was that the only time you ever came over, I think, huh? Back I think then? I only came over once. Maybe twice. I think I brought my little brother over that oh, one I think time. You did, yeah. Yeah. But that one time was dope. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely... I, I felt like we vibed hella hard, bro. Like, I definitely loved what you had going on, for sure. Yeah, I might be moving here again in the future. Hopefully next year I'm buying a house, building a house. And the goal is one day get some land. Mm-hmm. build a big old studio and be like yo now we're gonna put on festivals out here yeah that's the goal and that's just, the goal if you build it they will come so yo bro i'm stoked too. okay what was it backyard bumps backyard, backyard bumps. bumps backyard bumps hell yeah yeah backyard bumps dude and trelly d jumping out of the plane bro <laughs> Go, dude that was sick well hell yeah bro anything else you want to say before we peace out fucking don't sleep on your local rappers like fuck come on hell yeah dude and and connect with them don't be afraid to reach out and say what's up yeah bro we're a lot fucking nicer than you probably think we are honestly (laughs) yeah true dad people (laughs) hip-hop no pun intended has a bad rap for sure super bad rap for sure but like honestly most of the people are really fucking dope yeah man you know people are just people (laughs) People are strange, but, you know. That's the fucking truth. That's the real shit I've ever heard. People are people. People are people. Some of them, I don't know. They hey, be but like, don't be sheeple. Don't be sheeple. They though. might be a sheeple. You never know what they are out there. They might be cyborgs nowadays, dude. Nicki Minaj be looking too... too I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. They be looking too plastic out there in L.A. But oh, I kind of like it sometimes. I'm like, I, I don't know if I like it. I Whatever. Ah, oh, no shit. Well, shit. Hopefully, one day we we'll be out there traveling together, dog. You never know. We might be putting on shows. You never road, know. In you the double decker tour bus with lasers, and we'll be in the hologram future by then. Uh huh. We'll be performing but, from my living room. <laughs> yeah, dude. We might be virtually like this, man. Never fucking know, man. Well, shit. I guess, yeah. Thanks for doing the Crossroads podcast, and I'll see you next time we cross paths, bro. Yes, sir. Hell yeah, Doc. Well, have a good night, and thanks for doing this again. Hell yeah, man. You too. All right. Peace, brother. Peace.